Hi there gamers! Well, what a time to be alive. Not only is AMD finally able to deliver mobile GPUs that can keep Nvidia on its heels, but now Intel is also slowly about to roll out its dedicated GPU lineup. We have one of the very few ARC A730M equipped laptops in the studio right now and we put it through its paces to see if it's a worthy consideration for 2022. While our reader unit is from a smaller brand from Europe, the same chassis should be available in the near future from other manufacturers. In our case the Median Eraser Major X10 does not only sport a long name but also a well designed chassis that can hold its own in comparison to the big players out there. Since it looks very similar to Lenovo's Legion 5 Pro and the ARC A730M is also positioned as a direct competitor to the Nvidia RTX 3060, we will compare it mostly against the Legion offering. Our reader unit is equipped with Intel's mainstream gaming CPU, the i7-12700H, 32GB of RAM, a 1TB SSD and a 16-inch 16x10 QHD screen. Apart from the slightly wobbly display, the eraser is well made. All the materials feel pretty good to the touch and hold up well against the mid-range competition. While you enjoy some b-roll shots to get an idea of the median's design, please consider subscribing to the channel to stay up to date on all things tech. We really appreciate each and every one of you watching our videos, but also notice that the majority of you guys are not yet subscribed. So please help us out by clicking that particular button within the next few minutes. While we think it's very weird that an all Intel machine does not have Thunderbolt, the 60-inch gaming laptop sports solid I.O. On the right side you can find two USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 ports with DisplayPort pass-through and a single USB-A 3.2 Gen 2. On the left you can find an additional USB-A that is also 3.2 Gen 2 and the audio combo port. Conveniently, all the bigger connectors are located in the back and include Ethernet, HDMI 2.0, another USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 and the power connector. In terms of wireless communication, the eraser does not disappoint and delivers very fast transfer rates thanks to its latest Intel Wi-Fi 6 card. For upgrades and repairs, opening up the Intel Equipped Gamer is easy enough and you have access to the Wi-Fi card and two NVMe and SODOM slots. If you want to get a glimpse inside of our review unit, please head over to our written review. The positive trend for the eraser continues with the keyboard and the touchpad. While the latter is rather small in 2022, it should be alright for a gaming laptop. The keyboard sticks mostly to well-known standards and even sports full-size arrow keys. The keys themselves offer a very pronounced pressure point and decent travel and should please the majority of users for both work and games. The 16x10 QHD display is a great choice for a modern gaming laptop. With its above average brightness and solid numbers for contrast and color gamut coverage, it is well suited for entertainment and video games. Even fans of fast-paced shooters should enjoy the panel's fast response times. And with accurate factory calibration and even better numbers with manual calibration, even semi-professional content creation or video grading are possible with the Eraser. Alright guys, let's talk performance. And before we start with the new GPU kit on the block, let's quickly have a look at the CPU. The Medion can hold its own in this regard and delivers performance numbers that are on par with the average results we got from the same chip in our database. While the Legion 5 Pro is still king with its crazy high power levels for the i7, the rest of the competition is usually a few percentage points behind the all Intel laptop. In the Eraser's control software you have three different performance profiles that are very well tuned both in terms of their performance differences and also when it comes to fan noise, but more on that later. System performance is excellent as well as is shown by our PC Mark 10 scores. Usually the difference here is marginal so it is great to see that the Arc GPU isn't limiting the user experience during general day to day use. Speaking of snappy performance, the Medion is delivering outstanding drive performance and can set itself apart from the competition in this regard. Alright, let's talk about the really interesting thing here, Intel's first dedicated mainstream gaming GPU in a laptop. The chip itself comes with 24 XE cores, 24 dedicated ray tracing units and 12GB of re-RAM. 
And in synthetic tests and especially in the Eraser's Turbo mode, the new Intel GPU can perform on par or even ahead of the beastly 140 watts RTX 3060 of the Legion 5 Pro. So let's all go out and buy Intel GPUs, right? Not quite. The story is a little bit more complicated in real world scenarios. If that is because of the architectural differences, or simply due to the fact that both AMD and Nvidia had much more time to mature their drivers and maybe even work very closely with developers, is hard to tell at this point. In some games like Elden Ring, Cyberpunk and Forza Horizon 5 for example, the A730M is easily able to keep up with the RTX 3060. While it falls behind in others and is barely able to keep up with something like an RTX 3050 Ti, a GPU that can be found in much cheaper laptops. The gap is further widened once you go beyond Full HD. In QHD for example, the difference is sometimes night and day. If you head over to our website and check out our game list, you can filter our database for specific GPUs and it will show you the games we have tested on your specific selection. Let's just hope that Intel is able to improve the situation within the coming months with updated driver support to hopefully make the ARC GPUs a viable alternative to Nvidia and AMD. In regards to the real world gaming performance, the Intel GPU in the Eraser is well suited for Full HD but is struggling to get solid 60fps in the native QHD resolution. We actually tested a ton of games on the ARC A730M and if you want to see for yourself how the Intel GPU delivers in a bunch of older and modern games, please head over to our website. In terms of content creation, we did our new Blender benchmarks and I also tested timeline performance and exports in Resolve 18, which is what we use for our video production. In Blender performance isn't bad per se, if you compare the ARC scores against CPU rendering or against CUDA rendering. But if you switch to the RT enabled optics renderer, the RTX 3060 can compute the classroom test easily in half the time. As for Resolve 18, unfortunately I do not have the i7 RTX 3060 config of the Legion 5 Pro in the studio anymore. And the only laptops I can directly compare against the ARC equipped laptop is a Legion 5 Pro with an RTX 3060 but an AMD 6600H and an Alienware X17 with the same CPU as the Eraser but with an RTX 3080 Ti. In this case the ARC equipped notebook can export one of our latest videos about 2 minutes faster than the Legion 5 Pro. Which may be the result of the much larger revamp compared to the RTX 3060. Of course the difference could also be because of the much weaker CPU. But usually Resolve 18 is much more GPU dependent. Which becomes apparent if we compare the 3080 Ti result which can export the same video in about half the time. We will try to incorporate much more real world tests like this in the future to have more data available. Fan noise is actually not bad for the eraser and temperatures are also well within safe margins. To give you guys an idea, we took some noise samples for you. Battery life is alright for a gaming laptop. While it will hardly win any endurance battles under load, it can hold its own against the competition and compared to the Legion with the i7 RTX 3060 combo, well it's not really a competition when it comes to your next Netflix marathon. Alright guys, let's wrap it up. Is Intel a serious competition for Nvidia or AMD? Right now, not really. If you compare the median to the similarly equipped Legion 5 Pro, the RTX 3060 equipped notebook would be the more obvious choice when it comes to overall performance scores. That said, the median is around 100 bucks cheaper at 1700 euros at the time of filming. And if Intel might position their GPUs at an even more attractive price point and deliver more mature drivers in the coming months, picking this one up at sale might even be a worthwhile investment. For now, Intel Arc users should be aware that they are early adopters for a first-gen product. 
with all the potential problems this situation can bring with it. It is not like Intel didn't deliver a solid GPU. It's just, at least for now, Nvidia and AMD of course are quite a bit ahead. But please let us know what you think about the Intel Arc GPUs. Would you pick one up if the price was competitive? Or are you interested but rather wait for next gen? Please sound off in the comments below. That would be it for today. Thanks a ton for watching and please consider subscribing if you like what we are doing here. And please don't forget to like the video, it helps us tremendously. My name is Alex, you have been amazing as always and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.